Okay. Uh, so thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shatish, for uh, having invited me uh, and giving me this opportunity to interact with uh, young students of Ramaya Institute. Uh, this institute I have heard about a lot earlier, as if means uh, after uh, we in remaining in IIT system, we only keep hearing about greatness of IITs and ICs. But uh, I myself have done my B.Tech from KIIT uh, Bhubaneswar and. Uh, uh, there are a lot of, uh, at least few, rise, uh, what to say, shining stars in private space as well who are doing pretty well, and Ramaya is probably one of them. Um, and uh, I'm happy to see so many uh, young faces uh, here, uh, you know, who are here to listen about Swami Vivekananda and his ideals, uh, and uh, uh, many of, uh, what to say, coming to know Swami Vivekananda at, my, at the age of, say, around 21, 22, when I... Uh, in my B.Tech, I had no, uh, during that time, I had no, uh, what to say, exposure to Swamiji's ideas. Um, I was, uh, I came across Swamiji's ideas, ideals when I was in my uh, PhD. So in PhD, I was in IIT Madras, and especially, uh, I have now uh, lived in West, lived in India, different parts. I was there in uh, IIT Ropar for five years in Punjab. Uh, Chennai, I was five years uh, as uh, in uh, doing my PhD. Uh, so uh, definitely, there are certain spiritual vibrations which are there on the southern side of the country, which are pretty unique. And uh, a lot of my, uh, uh, what to say, exposure. Even though Swami Vivekananda was born in uh, uh, Kolkata and uh, you know, uh, in uh, West Bengal. But I find uh, his bigger followers are in South India. <laughs> you know, you'll find uh, uh, Chennai Ramakrishna Math, even here in, uh, uh, in uh, Bangalore, we have two Ramakrishna Maths, and there, is, there are very uh, you know, serious followers. You will not find such serious following even in Bengal if you go. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, so uh, during that period of five years at IIT Madras, I was uh, one of the chief, uh, chief volunteers, uh, I would say, one of the core volunteers of IIT Madras Vivekananda Study Circle. It is a study circle which now I think is running over 15 years now in there, and it's uh, one of the oldest. It's one of the oldest study circles there, uh, so oldest student groups in IIT Madras. So when I was there, uh, that's when I started learning about Swamiji's ideas. I uh, came across, uh, you know, many monks of Ramakrishna order, and uh, that time it, uh, what do you say? So, uh, yeah, as a young boy of 22 year old at that time, uh, Swamiji's thoughts and ideas actually attracted me uh, magnetically. Uh, so I believe ideas of Swamiji are uh, a definitive guide for anybody to have an ideal in life or to, you know, whoever wants success in life. Again, success as such, you know, what do you mean by success? You know, success, uh, if you look at the current colloquial term, it is like, okay, uh, monetary success or getting power, position, money in some ways. Uh, but, uh, you know, ultimately, I would talk about that. Uh, so success, we have to think about what is success. For someone, one thing may be suc uh, being successful in one thing. Uh, maybe somebody wants money, and for them to get money is success. But if somebody wants a peaceful life, for them, for probably they would like to go to uh, you know maybe a small town, live there, and do some of their uh, you know spiritual practice. That may be success in their life. Somebody wants to serve the poor. If they are doing that, that may be success. Okay, so success as such, this term, uh, you know, I would say what we are seeking is not success. We are seeking happiness. Okay, so if you find actually a lot of successful people. In, uh, in uh, you know, you will find a lot of successful people who are unhappy. Okay, so you find, for example, last year there was a big case of Sushant Singh Rao. Uh, you know, Sushant Singh, I think his name right. So uh, that big act actor, you know, uh, he committed suicide. Wasn't he successful from our perspective? Anybody of here probably would like to be at his place. But then he was so frustrated with life that he had to commit suicide. <laughs> okay, so success does not essentially mean that you have a lot of money, or there may be, uh, uh, and you find a lot of poor people. You go to their house in small town, small villages. You'll find the shine in their eyes, the brightness in their eyes shows that they're very happy, very you know contented with what they have. So uh, that's probably you have to think about what uh, success is. So. Uh, 
now well what did swami ji teach especially for the youth if you think so let me answer this with a series of denials so swami ji did not teach any shortcuts to success or joy in life he did not teach us to run away from uh, you know problems of life okay so he used to say one one place he said that uh, you know many people say that uh, think that by running away into caves in himalayas or in jungles we will be able to achieve peace or achieve uh, that uh, what to say we'll be able to control our mind but the uh, your my wherever you go you will be able to you will be taking this mind with you there right and this mind will not allow you to sit uh, quietly there if you have all these devils in your mind here itself so it is not that by changing your circumstance drastically or going to some cave you will be able to you know achieve peace or uh, you know peacefulness of mind and wherever you are you can practice that so you need not go to a cave to practice uh, you know so running away from problems of life is not going to solve your problem of uh, your mind or uh, uh, your depression or whatever he did not talk of violence or hatred of any kind okay and he did not teach that there are there is only darkness or hopelessness all around us uh, which many people think to you know seem to insist uh, uh, around us nor did swami ji teach that there is no hope for an individual or that you are condemned uh, because of your birth your caste or your gender or maybe you could not make to iit or something so uh, it's not that you are condemned because you could not crack an exam so uh, so inability to fill uh, act in a particular way or not being not fitting to somebody else uh, definition of success does not mean that you are a failure so on the contrary swami ji was an embodiment of positive and healthy approach to life okay so in vivekananda if you see there is nothing negative uh, actually ravindranath tagore used to say that swami ji's words came from his own grand life of realization and his deepest convictions convictions and bold actions he taught that everyone should take the responsibility of their lives themselves and by finding their own inner strength so one idea he uh, talks about again and again is the divinity of man inherent divinity of the man so which is spoken about if you look at any of our ancient scriptures one core idea that comes out is that we are all inherently divine we are basically same as god only through the power of maya we are thinking that we are this limited body and we are limited by uh, whatever circumstances we have but if we go deep inside connect deep inside and realize who we are we will realize that we are infinite we have all the power we can do anything and everything so uh, so not to blame others not to blame friends parents school or college authorities or government uh, and he asked people to take whole responsibility on your own shoulders and try to do better he said once men in general lay the blame of life upon their fellow men or uh, or failing that on god or they conjure up some ghost and say it is fate where is fate who is fate we reap what we sow we are the makers of our own fate none else has the blame none else has the praise the wind is blowing those ships whose uh, those ships whose sails are unfurled catch it but those which have their sails furled do not catch the wind it is it the fault of the wind be free hope for nothing from anyone i am sure that if you look back at your lives you will find that you were always vainly trying to get help from others which never came all the help that has come has come from within yourselves so uh, that's the idea of divinity of man that swami ji used to teach that you have to see that who you are connect to the divine inside and all the strength all the help will come from inside you so you need not depend on others or think yourself that you are this weak body or you have been a failure in life if you think that you are strong if you think that you are divine within then you will be able to realize your strength and will be able to do great things and his ideas on education are particularly interesting uh, he used to say that our education system of today is designed to fill you with a mass of information and uh, basically if you see that most of our college education today is a race to get uh, marks get grades and just keep uh, repeating different facts which are there in books 
And uh, our universities have basically, if you think, have become examination bodies. I think your examinations are also right now going on. So in fact, when I was used to, I used to teach in uh, uh, IIT. So one of the principles, I have never taken a uh, exam uh, uh, of uh, where people have to I have never taken a closed book exam. Actually, Vibham is now my co-founder in my startup. He was earlier my student. I have never uh, taken a closed book exam. Every time it is open book. You bring whatever books you want, whatever notes you want. Okay? Because ultimately, when you go to the field, to the job, uh, you always have access today to internet. You have always have access to all the books. Now you have access to chat GPT. <laughs> okay? So that way, uh, what are you going to? What are you trying to test? We are trying to test that whether, whether given all these conditions, are you able to, uh, you know, conjure up or take up all these ideas together and come up with systems, come up with solutions? Are we able to test that? And it is not easy. For example, my, many faculty members are here. Actually, setting up an open book exam is very difficult <laughs> because you have to think about how students, uh, you know, uh, what questions should I set so that students will not be able to say, uh, easily get it, or they have to think. Uh, and that requires you to think. And then uh, what happens is students also share, OK, last, uh, last year what exam was conducted. So then you have to conduct, uh, you know, you have to every time create new questions in a new style. So that is fun. That is the exercise that I did a lot and I used to enjoy. And students also, uh, you know, uh, enjoyed. And they probably used to fear that kind of exam also. So. Uh, so Swamiji used to say, what type of education do we want? He said, we want that type of education by which the character is formed, strength of mind is increased, and by which one can stand on one's own feet. Okay? So character building is, uh, I will talk about character building going forward. Uh, so what he used to say that uh, regarding this uh, amassing information, information-based exams probably, just amassing information and going on studying is not important. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, for example, uh, in New Year we find uh, like I used to also do that. Uh, I would um, create a list of all the books I have learned, uh, I have read over last one year. Actually, 90% of students here I know have never probably have not even read read one book in the last one year. You think about it. You know, you think about it uh, genuinely. You'll see that you might not have read even one book, half a book, over last one year. Okay, so. Uh, and uh, reading is a habit that is greatly rewarding. I myself used to suffer from that. But uh, at one time, I realized, and then I uh, kind of became a voracious reader for a couple of years. Read, read, used to read like 20 books, 25 books a year. Uh, but then now, again, uh, I have a, another realization after doing that, is that it is also not essential to keep reading a lot. You know. There are, you will find that it is better to just find out, maybe you read, initially you read uh, many books and probably find out which are the core ideas which resonate to you, which is something which you want to connect to or you want to be an expert in that area. Then probably just five books or even one or two books and just those books if you re repeatedly read and just uh, take those ideas into yourself, that probably is much more rewarding than just being, you know, just soaking up a library and trying to be a, like a parrot or something. So uh, uh, Swamiji used to say that uh, education is not the amount of information that is put into your brain and runs riot there, undigested all your life. We must have life building, man making, character making assimilation of ideas. If you have assimilated five ideas and made them your life and character, you have more education than any man who has got by heart an entire library. Okay? Actually, sometimes I uh, used to say uh, you know, that uh, whatever we are, uh, you study, you know, probably, uh, as you go ahead with your education, actually, the, there are four or five ideas which you even learned in your nursery. You know? Ki don't tell a lie or don't cheat anyone, don't, uh, you know, uh, be violent. You know, those are the ideas. You know, broadly you'll see, even if you take any big idea of philosophy, any religion, or somebody, those are the only ideas which are being packaged and again delivered to you, okay? Ultimately, if you absorb those four or five ideas of being ethical, moral, living a, uh, you know, good life, trying to be helping to others, that's all, that's required. Life is not very complicated that you have to read books and books and then be, uh, so just doing good, being good and uh, doing good, that's probably all the message that is there. 
so coming to this uh, idea of education, and uh, <clears throat> one thing which I was very fascinated about, and what I would say drew me to Swami Vivekananda a lot, was his ideas on concentration of mind. And uh, concentration of mind and how you know, knowledge itself is something inherent to us. And it is not by going to university or somebody outside will give you knowledge. They can, inst they can give you that right stroke or right insight at some point, which will help you to discover that knowledge which is already within you. I don't know how many PhD students are here, but uh, mostly MSc or uh, you know, BSc students are here. But you might have done a lot, some projects in your career. I myself have done, probably I cannot even now discount how many projects I was involved in. Uh, but yeah, when you, you start working on a particular project, for example, I was working my PhD, say, I, and I have guided more than seven PhD students. Uh, what happens in a PhD project like a thing is that you have a five years project, you are working on a research problem, you are given a research problem, you are, you know, uh, you bang your head on that, okay, how do I uh, get a new insight which can come into my thesis. What happens is when you are, when you concentrate in one direction for a long period of time, for a particular project, suppose there is a particular project you have in chemistry or something, and you start reading about it, what is the first step? You start reading about it, learning about the literature survey of what other people have done in that area. And then you start focusing and focusing and focusing uh, on that particular area or that particular, uh, um, what is the idea that you want to do research on or you are focused on. Now, this will be filled with failure many times for a long period of time. And I find that PhD students, for example, in the five years, it's by the third year or so, third or fourth year even, they finally get some idea, okay, that comes like an eureka. Okay, oh, this is that idea. And that sometimes, I have realized many times I will be taking bath and get that idea, okay. So that idea, when, how does it come? Does it, uh, you know, it's like, did it, when we think that that idea struck me, I would say that, okay, this idea struck me. From where did it came, come from? It came from within you, right? It was sitting somewhere within you. But it, get, it got discovered. It got discovered by you, so that idea was already there within you. It got discovered by you. It's like, uh, if you look at Patanjali Yoga Sutra, the first Sutra of Patanjali Yoga Sutra, Patanjali Yoga Sutra is the, is the primal text of yoga. Okay? If you look at any of the yoga traditions, they all derive their, their base from Patanjali Yoga Sutra. And Patanjali was the, uh, uh, this great sage. If you read at, as his sutras, uh, which are probably, I think, in uh, hundreds or so in those sutras, they are very terse, very, only five lines you will write. Okay? And there are commentaries of pages after pages of, over them, which other people have done. And uh, in that Yoga Sutra, the first line which, is, which, uh, which he says, uh, it is on the, uh, he says that yoga chittasya vritti nirodha. Okay? Yoga is, what is yoga? Yoga is the calming down of the vrittis. Vrittis are what? Vrittis are basically, uh, just say, like, uh, if you have a pond, in that pond, if, there, if the pond's water is you know, moving a lot, okay? that is the vritti. Okay? And it is like your mind is continuously moving like that pond. So if the mind is moving, then if there are fishes under the pond, or if there is a gold coin lying below the pond, it is not visible. Okay? But when that pond becomes absolutely calm, the same thing which was earlier invisible starts becoming visible. So yoga chitta se vritti nirodha means the first, the step, what is, defines the whole of the mind control is that if we can calm down the vrittis of the mind, the same knowledge which is within you will be start becoming visible, which was earlier invisible to you. Okay? Though, so how does it become... Uh, uh, how do those chitta vritti uh, come down is that when you get concentrated on one particular problem by thinking about it over and over and over again, which happens in particular projects or in particular, for a, what do you say, um, PhD uh, research or some kind of research, when you become focused on that by studying a lot, always thinking about that, what happens is that particular door opens up and then you see that at some point, okay? Uh, and that's what uh, Swamiji was, used to say about Newton, that we say Newton discovered gravitation. Was it sitting somewhere in a corner waiting for him? It was in his own mind. The time came and he found it out. All knowledge that the world has ever received comes from the mind. The infinite library of the universe is your own mind. The external world is simply the suggestion, the occasion, 
that sets you to study your own mind. But the object of a study is always your own mind. The falling of an apple gave the suggestion to Newton and he studied his own mind. He rearranged all the previous links of thought in his mind and discovered a new link among them, which we call the law of gravitation. It was not the apple nor anything in the center of the earth. Okay? Similarly, what does your teachers do? They basically help you discover that link, okay? which uh, you know, opens up that direction, which helps you to see that which is already within your mind. So as I said, uh, so Swamiji has actually written a, uh, or has given a series of lectures on uh, the control of mind and a exposition on the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, which is codified in his Raj Yoga lectures. So there is a book called Raj Yoga. You can probably uh, get it. And then if those who are interested in this area, they can take a look at it. So uh, on the concentration, again, Swamiji used to say, to me, the very essence of education is concentration of mind not collecting facts. If I had to do my education again and had any voice in that matter, I would not study facts at all. I would develop the power of concentration and detachment. And then with a perfect instrument of mind, I would collect facts at will. It's just like, suppose you have to go, uh, have you ever seen like, for example, uh, you have to, you are hurrying somewhere, okay? You have an interview or something or some meeting. You are hurrying somewhere and hurriedly you go and then you go to your car or something and then you remember, oh, I forgot this, <laughs> okay? And then you come back and then you forget another thing. So that way you actually waste more time. <laughs> Ultimately, if you would have went to the calm mind, you would have completed that earlier than if you go with it, you know, hurriedly. So similarly, uh, Suppose you, one uh, carpenter, somebody who is, uh, what is a woodcutter is there. He has to cut a tree. Now suppose for cutting that tree, he uses an axe. That axe is blunt. It, it's, uh, you know, sh it is not uh, as sharp. And he tries to cut that tree. It, it might take him eight hours. If he takes 30 minutes to just sharpen that axe, okay, and then tries to cut the tree, it might take him half one hour to cut the same tree. Okay? So overall, Concentration of mind, doing meditation, practicing our mind actually is more paying. It's just that we don't see an immediate effect. And that's why most of us do not do it. Because we see, okay, this is boring. What am I getting by doing this? I'm getting, uh, you know. But then if you keep doing it over and over again, you will see the effects will slow, slowly show up. That's the difference between... <clears throat> Actually, I have two startups here in Bangalore. I have left my job at IIT Roper. I am now pursuing these two startups here. And both of them are actually around this in some sense, uh, that how do we make people do these things uh, like fitness? Like people know that getting fit is good for them. You know? But they don't practice it. Or they, most of them do not go to run. Most of you young people, uh, what happens is that when you are below 30, you feel like you're invincible. <laughs> and then you neither practice anything uh, or neither do exercise. You keep eating all kinds of sugary stuff, drink all kinds of, you know, do night outs, uh, drink all this sort of like Red Bull and other stuff. What happens is these will not show up at this time. This will have its time. It will come at 30, 30, after 35, it will start coming. Okay. So, uh, and uh, it, one thing which youngsters should see is that you sometimes, what happens is they think that, okay, these are buddhil long All these are old people, you know, oh, unka life khatam ho gaya. But what happens is you, after some time, you yourself will realize it. Okay? <laughs> so that time will come. But yeah, there are two ways of actually learning. Actually, this concept of Shraddha Swamiji has spoken about a lot. And that concept of Shraddha is so important now after working with so many youngsters, I feel, is that uh, and I myself having fallen many times by doing the same. Oh, <laughs> So what happens is if you don't have Shraddha and you don't uh, trust somebody who has trodden the path, then you will have to go and fall and then learn. That is also a path, but then it will take you longer, longer uh, to achieve that. So that's where the concept of Shraddha was there. Like why is the Gurukula system or all these things were there? Whatever is Guru is saying. You know, take it with Shraddha. Similarly, the, our Guru's characters are also, you know, falling in some sense. That's why probably we are not able to influence. Actually, the, in Indian tradition, we have three levels of uh, teachers, okay? We say there is Sikshak, then there is Acharya, 
and then there is guru okay shikshak is who shikshak is shikshak is a teacher okay teacher means he may be teaching in the classroom okay that smoking is injurious to health but he might be going outside and smoking we find uh, doctors also you find uh, you know i i myself have worked with a lot of doctors they might be they know that this is bad for them they they will go and uh, do the same thing after uh, you know uh, in parties you'll see they will be doing the same thing they'll be drinking they'll be smoking everything will be going on uh, so that is the concept of shikshak so shik then the concept of acharya acharya means acharan acharan means how he does he behave in life so acharya means he will show it by doing it is in his own life there was actually uh, uh, a small parable i remember uh, one day uh, a uh, what to say uh, a mother came with her child to a guru guru uh, who was there in their vicinity or in their village and she told that uh, guru ji uh, this my boy he eats a lot of sugar or sugary candy can you please tell him that uh, uh, tell him not to eat candy so then uh, he said uh, uh, okay uh, what you do is come after one week okay so then uh, she was surprised why coming after one week so okay so she came after one week and then now he said uh, look beta you should not uh, you know uh, eat sugary candy so much this is bad for you okay then the mother said he was surprised why why did he not say that day and the same thing he is saying today then uh, he asked uh, the guru ji after few day, uh, after the some time and he said see mother i used to i myself used to be very <laughs> fond of sugary candies so i used to eat a lot so what i did over last one week or one month is that i myself took a breath of not eating and when i you know could establish that i can live without that then only i found the authority to be able to speak that and then only your words will have effect you need not even speak your what you will your behavior will affect you know you will see that many of the some people when you some people or some those who live great lives you will see when you go to their presence itself you will feel you know that uh, difference how is that presence created you see some very ancient uh, uh, spiritual places if you go there you immediately feel that vibration how does it come it comes because that place for eons and eons or say thousands of your people have thought only pure thoughts whoever goes there they think pure thoughts so automatically when you go there you start feeling that similarly in patanjali yoga sutra if you go the first step of yoga there are eight stages of yoga that is told in uh, patanjali yoga the first step is yama niyama yama niyama is basically more of like moral practices and disciplinary practices some of them and he says that if somebody practices this moral practices for 12 years without broken uh, you know attention or without any break he will get certain siddhis so one of the siddhis is yama in yama one few of these practices one is ahimsa ahimsa is like you should not think of uh, doing violence to anyone through thought word or deed if somebody practices ahimsa for 12 years he says he will get this power that wherever he goes peace will Im immediately prevail even if uh, he goes to a jungle tigers and deers will be drinking water at the same place patanjali says this in his patanjali yoga sutra uh, similarly for satya he says that if somebody practices truth 12 years without in thought word and deed then where whatever he says will come to truth so that's why we see all this uh, what to say shrap de diya all these things were there right earlier so because people used to be so established in truth that uh, these rishis when they say something the nature itself will change its pathway to make that true okay so similarly there are other so patanjali also if you go deeper into it there are a lot of things and ultimately says that these are actually uh, obstacles in the path of yoga and one has to get over it because once you get these siddhis then you start you know th you stop there so all that's there there those are little bit out of uh, you know the scope of this uh, but yeah so swami ji himself had a great mastery over the power of his mind over his mind and he almost possessed a photographic memory so one day when he was in chicago uh, not one day so when he was in chicago he used to basically from a library he used to get one book every day through his disciple he used to go and get collect one book every day and he would return that book next day so for one month it was going so then the librarian who was there that uh, western lady she then uh, one day retorted to that uh, disciple that what are you doing 
every day you take this book and next day you, these thick books you take and next day you return. Uh, he said, our Swamiji reads. Does he read or is he just showing off? So uh, next day, uh, then, uh, then he went and told to Swami Vivekananda. So next day, Swamiji told, OK, I will go to, with you next day. So then he went to the librarian. The librarian said, uh, so why are you doing this? Every day you take one book and then just return next day. Uh, you know, uh, are you seriously studying any of this? He said, no, ma'am, I, uh, I am studying all the books that I take. You can ask me anything. And so, then she opened a few pages. She used to ask a few questions. And then he answered, there is some, is it from this? Yeah, so, so there's, uh, so he answered all the questions, including the paragraph number or the page number. And that is what uh, surprised her. And how, so, so that showed, and not only at this instance, but at many instances he, had, he has shown that uh, there is some noise, I think. Huh? Is it from? What? Yeah. Is it from this or? Yeah. So if we look at this, uh, Swamiji has actually shown this kind of you know, extraordinary power of remembrance uh, many times. And uh, many people have uh, written about it. So uh, today, if we see young people, they are highly distracted. Okay? You see, uh, for example, we are in a lot of, uh, we are actually developing an app called the Dhyan app. Meditation. It's focused on biofeedback-based meditation. Uh, and I was talking about my other startup. It is on gamification of physical exercise, where we are developing games, developing games for making you exercise. So if you, so what happens with exercise or meditation? Why people are not interested to do it? Is because there is no instantaneous dopamine boost. If you play games, for example, if you, are, if you are playing any particular game, you will see that you have an instantaneous dopamine boost. You kill an enemy, you jump on something. So you kill an enemy, you jump on, some, you, know, uh, you achieve some goal, then immediately your brain starts getting a dopamine boost. So then that is what keeps you hooked to the games. Similarly, if you see why is social media so addictive? Because when somebody likes your post, somebody comments good things about it, then it gives you that dopamine boost. That's why you get hooked onto us. And then that's why all the, for example, YouTube, if you open, whatever videos you like, it keeps showing you that video only, those types of video. Because it knows that whatever you like, if it keeps showing you that, then you keep getting the dopamine boost. So can we, but in case of, what you say, meditation, or in case of uh, in case of meditation or in case of uh, say sports or exercise what what happens is the rewards are delayed rewards are much delayed okay so if you start doing exercising today you will not start losing weight tomorrow or you start lifting dumbbells it is not that you will get muscles tomorrow if you keep doing that for one month, two months, then you'll see. Okay? So the, as the rewards are delayed, what happens is most people cannot keep their discipline. So what we are trying to do is, can we make these rewards instantaneous in some other way? So we connect them to games, or we connect them to biofeedback, where you get a score. OK, this was your Dhan score today. This was your Asan score today. And then something of that sort. And then we will have social media. You can post, OK, I meditated this much. And then your, your friend can then post, uh, you know, like it, comment it. So that way, using the power of social media, to, social media and technology to be able to do all this. So we see that uh, young people today are highly distracted many times. You see, and that is seen in the rise of the short form content. If you see YouTube, from the long form video, now they have, you know, they are high. Uh, first, Instagram became a hit. Instagram, if you see through their short form content. So this, this, you know, continuous swipe every few seconds. Every 30 seconds, I want to swipe. So because mind wants to, wants new content, OK? And if you keep, and these companies find that people get hooked to these kind of things, where if you keep giving them dopamine boost, one, one after another, then people hook to these kind of apps more. But this is not good for your mind going forward. That's why our attention span is dro dropping. And we are not able to concentrate on things for long periods of time. Because we are accustomed, OK, I should get something new every few seconds, every few minutes. Now, if child, this is a thing, actually, we are becoming children in some ways. If you see a child, 
you try to give a child a toy it will play with it for 5 minutes ah ho gaya then next next otherwise it will start crying so as we grow older what happens is that we start to be able to concentrate for longer we sit for example if i would get, get my 3 year old old daughter here you have been able to sit here for half an hour right but will a small child of 3 years old will ever sit here okay so that's the thing so if we are are we uh, you know becoming more matured or are are we good becoming more child like so that's one question that you should ask um yeah so one another story of swamiji is uh, he was taking the uh, stroll along the banks of uh, river chicago uh, and then he found a uh, few young boys there on the bank they were trying to shoot uh, what you say these egg shells which were floating on the water with a uh, air gun and they found that uh, and he found that uh, he was standing there and then they were not able to shoot any of those egg shells uh, and then he was standing there and uh, a uh, smiling then one of those boys became angry and then he came oh uh, sir do you think that you can do this uh, come and try then that uh, then swamiji went there and he took uh, that gun and then aimed aimed at those egg shells one after another and all the 12 egg shells in 12 shots he shot and then uh, these boys were struck he said you must be uh, you know great marksman you must have practiced uh, shooting for a long period of time so no my boys i just held the gun for the first time <laughs> so then he said how could you uh, you know shoot so well then swami ji said well let me tell you let me tell you a secret whatever you do concentrate all your attention to it think of nothing else if you are shooting keep your mind only on the target your aim will not fail concentration can work wonders even when we are studying think only of the lesson at hand then you will easily remember what you study actually you all know uh, uh, arjuna's story where arjuna and uh, 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 what was guru's name uh, Vy- dronacharya yeah dronacharya sorry so dronacharya took this uh, exam of uh, arjuna uh, sorry of the pandavas and uh, kauravas right he was asking like what do you see on the tree so uh, some used to say okay we see all the trees we see all the birds then somebody said i see the bird somebody say i see the eye the the feather of the bird then arjuna when he came and he didn't allow anybody to shoot then ultimately arjuna came and uh, then he asked what do you see i say i only see the eye i don't see anything else okay and then he said okay shoot and then he shot okay so that's what we have to be single pointed focus on one thing i find like uh, i myself have done a lot of mistakes in my life i was involved with a lot of projects nowadays i i want to concentrate my focus i want to become focused on one thing because what happens is trying to do 10 different things you we uh, are limited in some ways uh, you know until we have realized brahman probably we are limited and so our concentration limited and if we try to do too many things what happens is we don't we don't put our enough power in all of them rather than that let's focus on few things or one thing one thing at a time even when in morning uh, suppose you are studying something what i find many young people nowadays they will put music on their ears and then they will start studying they will have scrolling some uh, you know side mein, whatsapp notification bhi aa raha hai instagram bhi chal raha hai so then your concentration is getting distracted i am not saying that you don't see whatsapp first suppose you are studying one text first do that 30 minutes don't do anything else sab band kar lo close everything just study that then 15 minutes you do whatsapp okay but then when you mix what happens is you have the way if you look at patanjali yoga sutra the way it is written it's very scientifically written you have these indriyas okay indriyas means five indriyas you have five senses you have have you noticed that when you for example this bird is one sound is coming outside okay were you listening to, were you able to hear this when i was talking you are not because because your concentration is focused here similarly when your mind is focused on one thing it cuts off everything else okay so similarly uh, what happens is when you try to foc- so your mind can only focus on one thing at a time completely if you are trying to focus on multiple things what happens is your mind switches between different senses if you try to hear to one thing very intently somebody may pass in front of you will not hear you will not see them okay because your your mind is now attached to that indriya similar so that's what you have to think about that when you are studying and if you are trying to do 10 different things your ear is also engaged 
your mind is also thinking about okay what in the notification is coming so all rather than doing that why don't we divide it into proper channels let's do first 30 minutes focused work and then you'll see within first 30 within first 2 hours you wake up in the morning do first first 2 hours of focused work you will find that the amount of work you should do in those 2 hours you will not do in you know uh, 5 hours of the day this concept of going to 8 hours in office i in my office i tell uh, you come anytime no problem but whenever you come you do focused work okay uh, so yeah so 90% of thought force is wasted by an ordinary human being and therefore he is constantly committing blunders the trained man or mind never commits a mistake <clears throat> so yeah i think how much time we have uh, uh, a lot so few other ideas i'll just speak about quickly uh, this was on uh, mind then uh, it is essential uh, you know so talking about success it is uh, essential to delve upon the idea of why do we want to success, do want success as i said in the very beginning i was saying that why do you want success you want success to be happy right and we find enough number of successful people who are un unhappy you know now why they are unhappy what happens is unhappiness springs from you know you will see somewhere there is a tinge of adharma okay adharma or something which has happened which is not uh, not allowing to remain in peace so there's where we have concept of dharma artha kama and moksha these are the four things which four pillars of our what you say religion or way of life so dharma and artha uh, and artha and kama kama is basically all your desires whatever you want in life artha is the material possessions that are required to achieve those desires those two you you go and achieve those are the success probably the colloquially defined success that we want but they have to be done under the umbrella of dharma like for example while possess getting these possessions if you are hurting someone or you are robbing someone you are doing some uh, what to say uh, telling lies left and right then even if you get all this artha and kama they will not give you peace okay so they have to be under the umbrella of dharma okay and there's where character is important okay and character building education man making education that's what swami ji used to talk about uh, so swami ji used to say if you want to judge a man's character look not at his great performances okay every fool may become a hero at one time or another in today's social media world somebody putting one uh, reel of you know some viral reel will become famous you know one night okay but every fool may become a hero at one time or another watch a man do his most common actions okay those are indeed the things which will tell you the real character of the great man okay so if you i in our days you know uh, see very subtle things if i i'm in a uh, i am sit somewhere if you see that how the person is behaving if they are sitting there shaking their legs you know i i know that you know the person's mind is not uh, you know little bit there is uh, you know uh, pro he has to work on his mind so these very subtle things you know sometimes the way they bring a glass of water and give you whether they gave offered you something or not it's not a matter of judgment it's just like you will see that from very subtle actions your nature is reflected to them through them it doesn't matter how uh, you know greatly you speak or how much you know very subtle actions in life can show that what is the character of the person okay and uh, there's where uh, for example if you see buddhism there is a lot of focus on mindfulness okay buddhism uh, if you read any of there is a book uh, called uh, uh, what to say old path white clouds by thich nhat han he is a great uh, you know scholar of buddhism uh, he is a uh, he is from uh, indonesia or some that side country but he has written very nicely on buddha and his life and uh, one uh, place he says how uh, the concept of mindfulness mindfulness is the concept of living in the current moment okay so what is happening right now what do we have in life if you think about the past is gone okay you cannot do anything about the past the future is yet to come you keep worrying about it and lose your current moment which you have this is the only moment you have right you are trying to be happy in some future okay why not be happy right now if you start 
enjoying this very moment, okay? Enjoy like, okay, I have so many, uh, you know, good friends. I'm able to listen. I have at least all my limbs are working, you know? And be very focused on this moment, okay? The sound of which is coming from this mic, okay? And if you get absorbed in that particular moment, and your mind stops thinking, worrying about, uh, you know, uh, worrying about future or getting depressed about the past, then nothing else is required. You may die even the next moment, okay? So that's the concept of mindfulness. And if you practice the concept of mindfulness, that's a powerful concept of being at peace at any moment without worrying for the future. So for young people, uh, an important character of Swamiji, uh, Swamiji wants to, them to develop is the concept of Shraddha, as I said. Shraddha, as I was saying, there are two ways of learning. Either you girke siklo, either by, you know, you have to fall down yourself. If you don't want to listen to anyone, okay, go ahead in life. You learn by falling. That is one way. Second is by Shraddha. You know, you take, you know, somebody who has trodden that path, you know, accept them as your acharya or guru. And then if you follow their path, your path may be shortened by many folds. Very quickly you will do. Rather than, you know, you trying to do the, learn the same thing which they have done. For example, there is a uh, parable, I think it's a Buddhist, uh, you know, Buddhist parable, not parable, it's like you can fill a, fill a cup of, suppose a cup of, uh, cup is already filled with water. If you try to fill it with more water, what will happen? It will all spill, okay? But if a cup is half full or it doesn't, uh, you know, is not full, then only you can fill water. So if somebody thinks, I sab jaanta hon, I already know everything, okay? Then there is no point in trying to teach them, okay? If you try to teach them, it will all fall like that, okay? So there has to be some acceptance to what is coming. And there's why Shankara says, na pruched na bruyat. If somebody is not asking, don't tell them, okay? <laughs> if somebody is actually coming and asking with Shraddha, then only tell them something. Otherwise, you are wasting yourself, uh, your energy. And if you are trying to do that, that means you are also trying to, you know, probably show off your uh, knowledge, you know? So that Shraddha is a very powerful thing. Uh, so Swamiji says, what we want is Shraddha. Unfortunately, it has nearly vanished from India. And this is where we are in our present state. What makes the difference between man and man is the difference, is the difference in Shraddha and nothing else. What makes one man great and another weak is the Shraddha and nothing else. What makes one man great and another weak and low is the Shraddha. Okay. So give up the awful disease that is creeping into our national blood. The idea of ridiculing everything. The, that loss of seriousness. Give that up. Be strong and have the Shraddha and everything else is bound to follow. Okay? I think there are a few other points, but yeah, I think uh, this much should be fine. Itna jada bhi lecture Okay? So thank you everyone. If there are any questions, I'll